bursting is a feature that allows you to pre-generate a report and distribute different versions of this report to different users. Typically you would do this when you have different users accessing a single pre-generated report, but you want each of these users to see only data that is specific to that user. You can choose to display this pre-generated report in the repository so that when each user logs in they can open and view their unique version of the report, or you can schedule the report to be emailed to different users, each of whom will then get their own unique version of the report. Note that bursting is only available for pre-generated reports. If you want to display different data for different users in a live report, that is a report which is not pre-generated, then you can use a virtual private model or VPM. We do not cover VPMs in the current video. The current video only illustrates how to configure bursting for a pre-generated report. Let's begin by creating a simple report uh, that features a table that we would like to burst to different users. So in Style Studio, let's create a new report, press the new button in the toolbar, create a blank tabular report by selecting report on the left panel, blank tabular report from the right panel, and that creates a new blank report. We can add a title to this report. Uh, just do that by adding a text element into the header of the report, and we can just call this sales report. And we'll make this large and bold to look like a title. Okay, now let's go ahead and add a data table. So from the toolbox, uh, click on the table component. Just click once so that we'll use the data binding wizard for the table. For the data source, we'll select the uh, sample orders database and find the order model that contains uh, most of the important fields from our orders uh, data source. And then let's go to the columns tab and we'll just select a few columns here since this is only for purposes of illustration. Uh, we'll select the salesperson last name and you can either double click it or select the field and then press the arrow button to add it to the right panel. Salesperson last name, we'll select also the order number, the order date, the uh, customer company, the product name, and the product price. And these will be the columns in our table. Now what we're going to do um, ultimately is we're going to create uh, different versions of this report for different users. And each of those users is basically going to be um, one of the salespeople in this case. So we'll have the different salespeople logging in to view this report. And for each of those salespeople who logs in, we want to display a version of the report that contains only that particular salesperson's data. So this field here, the salesperson last name field, is going to be our bursting field. In other words, the values in this field will determine the records that get displayed to each user who logs in to view the report. Now for that reason, uh, retaining this field in our table with the other fields um, doesn't make that much sense because let's say we have a salesperson named Eric who's logging in, right? So Eric logs in and what they'll see is a table that contains only Eric's data, right? And what that means is that this field here will basically be uh, populated by uh, only the name Eric. So we'll have a number of rows in the table and in every single row the last name, the salesperson last name will be Eric because Eric sees only his own data. So that's not a very useful uh, column to retain in the table in that case. And so what you can do is you can actually hide that column. Um, I'm not going to do it in this case because I want to be able to illustrate that in fact when we generate the report that we are seeing the appropriate data for the correct uh, user login. However, I want to illustrate that in a real application when you have a situation like this where there's a, a column that will essentially become uh, fairly useless because it will have the same value in every row, you can hide that column by pressing the hide button. You can also hide the column later on um, or add the column as a hidden column uh, once we're done with the wizard. I'll show you how you would do that as well. Okay, so these are all the columns that we want in the table, and that's all that we're going to do in the wizard. Press finish, and there's our table. If you want to preview the table, you can see what it will look like. So press the preview button if you'd like, and you can see that we have some information. This table goes on for 96 pages, and uh, we have information. Obviously, these are records for all of the different salespeople. We see Hagenbart, Marston, and as we page forward, we'll see other
uh, salespeople as well. Here we have Duke, Miller. So those are, uh, this table contains data for all of the four salespeople. Okay, let's return to the design view. Now I mentioned that if you had not hidden the uh, salesperson last name column when we were doing the data binding wizard, we could still hide it at this point. So just to illustrate, let's say I were to uh, delete this column, delete the salesperson last name column. Um, then what I could do is I could add that column as a hidden column at this point as well. So I can find in the list of uh, fields available in the data model, find salesperson last name, and I can drag that down here in the editor as a hidden column. So now that column is available, however, it's hidden. It's not displayed as part of the table, but it is available. And I do need to have that column available in order to burst the table on that column. So the column that you're going to use as the bursting column, in other words, the column that contains the values that will determine which records are displayed to which user, that column does need to be part of the table. It does not need to be displayed in the table, but it at least needs to be a hidden column in the table. Okay, I'm going to undo uh, and return to the uh, original construction of the table that has the last name column there, again, because I want to be able to demonstrate uh, what what the um, the filtering actually achieves, and in order to be certain that we're getting the correct filtering, it's helpful to have that column visible. Okay, let's go ahead now and set this table up for bursting, and uh, in doing that, we'll actually specify that this table should be bursted out to different users based on the values in the salesperson last name column. In other words, the values in this column will determine which records will be uh, visible to which users, and we'll see how to do that in a moment. Before we do, notice that the ID of this particular table is table one. That is probably something that we should change to a more meaningful ID. So let's just do that. this. Uh, it's not required, but it's good practice. Uh, right click on the table, select properties, and we'll just change the ID here to something like a uh, bursting table. Again, this is optional, but when you have many elements in a report, in other words, you might have table one, table two, table three, chart one, chart two, chart three, and so on, it may be helpful to give a more meaningful ID to this particular table, which is the target of the bursting operation. Uh, there can only be one bursting element in a report, so you know this is going to be the bursting element in the report, and we'll call it bursting table. Press OK. And now we can set up the bursting. So in the Style Studio uh, report menu, find the bursting option and select that. And that opens up the report bursting dialog box. You can see in the dialog box here that you can choose to burst the report on either a user or a role. User means a user name. So basically uh, when a given user logs in, you're going to use that username to determine how the table is bursted. Uh, the other alternative is that you're going to use the role of the logged in user to determine how the table is bursted. So what you could do in that case is if the user has a role of say administrator, then you could deliver to them one version of the table. If the user has a role of salesperson, you could deliver to them a different version of the table. But in this case, we're going to use the user option here, meaning that different users will uh, receive different versions of the table based on their username. So the first thing we'll do is uh, turn on report bursting by enabling the report bursting option here. And again, select the user option. And then from the menu here, we have to select the element in the report that will be the bursting element. And so obviously the choice here is easy for us because there is only one candidate element in the report. The table is the only possible element, but of course in a real report you will have uh, typically more than one table, um, more than one section, and so on. So um, you may see a list of different components here. In that case you have to select the component that will be used as the bursting component. So the component that will determine uh, which version of the report gets distributed to which user. So in our case, again, we'll select the bursting table, and then we have to select the partition column. This is the column of the table that is going to be used to distinguish which records get sent to which user. 
So the obvious choice here is the salesperson last name column, right? That's the only column that has any relation at all uh, or any direct relation to the user who is logging in. So that's going to be the column that we use to discriminate the records in this table and um, segment the records so that certain records get displayed to one, uh, one user and other records get displayed to other users. So let's select the salesperson last name field here and that immediately moves us to the user tab. Under the user tab we have to specify the link between the user login name and the values that we find in the table. Right? We need to create the connection when a user logs in somehow that user login name needs to be associated with the values in the salesperson last name column of the table. That is what will allow the table to be segmented based on the user login. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a query that has uh, at least two columns and one of those columns has to be a column that matches the username of the user logging in. So we're going to need a, a column that contains the user login name and another column of that table is going to have to be the corresponding value that can be matched up with the values from the uh, column in the table, the salesperson last name. So for example, when a user named Eric logs in, we're going to use the query that we select to match the name Eric with the values that we expect to find in the salesperson last name column. Now, keep in mind that in our uh, sample, uh, with our sample users, the login, the username, is the salesperson first name, whereas obviously here in this column what we have is the salesperson last names. So what we're going to need to do is find a query that matches up the salesperson first name with the corresponding last name and that query will then allow us to map the user login to the values in this column of the table. Okay, well let's see if we have such a query. So I'm going to open up the query menu here and I'm going to scroll down and see if we have a query available to us that we could use for this purpose. Of course if we don't we could always create such a query but I see that there is a query here called sales by employee and I expect that this query may actually have both a first name and a last name field and if that's the case then we can use that query to create the mapping that we need between the user login and the values in the last name column of this table. So I'm going to select the sales by employee query and then from the uh, menu below, I need to find the field in that query that I can use to match up with the user login. So first of all, you'll note that there is in fact a first name column and a last name column. Right? So that indicates to me that this uh, query will provide a, a, a good mapping for me to map the first name to the last name. So for the user uh, field here, I'm going to select the first name. Right? Again, what I'm selecting here is the field that will match up to the user login. So when Eric logs in, right, I can take that user login name, Eric, and I can match that up to a value in the first name column of the sales by employee query. Right? And once I make that match, then I can pull off the corresponding last name. And that's what I select over here. So corresponding to the salesperson last name, which is the name of the column, that is our bursting column, I'm going to select the last name field of the sales by employee query. So basically what I'm setting up here again is a mapping between the user login and the corresponding value in the salesperson last name column. So the way this works, the user logs in, right? we match up the user login, the username, with a value in the first name column of the sales by employee query, and then the corresponding last name is going to be used to uh, match up with the salesperson last name column in the table and that will allow the table to be segmented based on the username of the logged in user. So that is the uh, basic design of table bursting. Press the OK button and, and that's it. We've set up bursting for this table. Let's go ahead and save the report. Press the save button and in the repository we can save this as a uh, burst report. Just give it the name burst report, press save. And now this report has been saved as a repository report which means it will be available to our uh, test server which uses the same repository as Style Studio. The next thing that we're going to do
is we'll go to the server and we'll specify that this report should be a pre-generated report. And then we can test the display of the report based on different user logins. So if you don't have your server running, then go ahead and start up your server and then log into Enterprise Manager. Now, because a bursted report is a pre-generated report, in other words, when you're uh, creating a bursting report, that report will be pre-generated on a particular cycle. The first thing that we might want to do is actually create a cycle for the pre-generation process. So to do that, uh, you can go to the Schedule tab in Enterprise Manager, and we'll create a cycle. Down at the bottom, there are a couple of options on the left, a uh, new task and new cycle. In this case, we'll create a new cycle. So press the new cycle button. And we can give this cycle a name and let's call it a bursting cycle. And what a cycle is, is just a specification of basically a time when a particular uh, event should occur. So we can choose a daily or weekly, monthly. Uh, there are a variety of different settings we can choose to specify a cycle. In this case, I'm going to use the defaults, which are a daily cycle, uh, 1.30 a.m., so 1.30 at night every day. This cycle will kick off, and the cycle will cause the bursting report that we created to be pre-generated. So all we're doing here is just creating a cycle that we can use for purposes of pre-generation. So once you've de defined the cycle, uh, press save, and we now have a cycle called bursting cycle, which will be available to us. And now we can go ahead and actually set up our report for bursting. So go to the report tab in Enterprise Manager and expand the repository listing. In the repository listing, you'll see the burst report that we created in Style Studio. This report appears here because our server, uh, at least as we have it set up here, is sharing the same repository as Style Studio. So when we saved the burst report in Style Studio, it becomes immediately available to the server. If you do not have your server set up this way, in other words, if Style Studio is not sharing a repository with the server, then what you'll need to do is do an incremental deployment to get the report into the server environment. You can find out more about incremental deployment in the documentation. Assuming that you do see the burst report in the repository, then what you'll do is click on the burst report. Again, the report that we created in Style Studio. Up at the top, there are several tabs. Click on the Options tab, and then select the Bursting option. When you select the Bursting option, you'll notice that the pre-generated option is turned on by default, right? So the bursting and pre-generated options are linked in the sense that when you select the bursting option, the pre-generated option is enabled as well. And the reason for this is that a bursted report is always a pre-generated report. Bursting is always associated with pre-generation. So what you'll now do is select the particular cycle on which you want the bursted report to be generated. So if you click on the pre-generation menu, you'll notice that there are two cycles available. MV cycle is a default uh, cycle that's defined in the default installation. Bursting cycle is the cycle that we just created a minute ago under the schedule tab. And so we'll select the bursting cycle. And you'll recall that that cycle basically defines a time of 1.30 a.m. on every day. So every day, 1.30 a.m., bursting cycle will uh, kick off and will pre-generate the burst report. So with those settings, press apply. And now we're done. So we've created our burst report in Style Studio, and we've configured the settings in Enterprise Manager to indicate that this report should be burst on the pre-generation cycle called bursting cycle. So what will happen is that the next time this cycle runs, the bursting cycle, which will be, uh, as, as things stand now, will be at 1.30 a.m. today, uh, when this cycle runs, the burst report will be generated and different versions of this report will be generated uh, for each of the different salespeople based on the settings that we made in Style Studio, where we defined the partitioning of the table. So how can we test this? 
to do this uh, without waiting uh, until the cycle actually runs at its natural time, which is 1.30 a.m., we can kick off the cycle manually, and we'll do that from the Schedule tab. So click on the Schedule tab at the top of Enterprise Manager, and then click on the Schedule Tasks folder. You don't need to expand the folder. You can just click on the folder itself, and that will open the list of available uh, tasks in the right panel. Uh, to see the tasks more clearly, you can expand the name column just by dragging the, uh, the column header border to expand that column. And you can see that there is a task called bursting cycle. Bursting cycle is the cycle that we created just a minute ago. So what we'll do, rather than waiting the, for the cycle to execute at 1.30 a.m., is we'll kick off the cycle now. To do that, click on the bursting cycle and then press the Run Now button and that will start the cycle running. And you can see that under last run status, the status is now running, which means that the cycle uh, has kicked off and it is pre-generating the bursting report that we created. That is, it's generating versions of this report for each of the different uh, salespeople. And after a minute, uh, a moment or two, you can click the refresh button, and then you should see that the task has finished, as indicated under the run status column. Uh, this should not take very long because this is a very short report. Um, and so what that means is that now different versions of this report have been generated for the different salespeople, and we can go ahead and test this out um, in the user portal. But before we do that, we should make sure that we actually have users defined in our system. Uh, we know that we want these four uh, salespeople um, defined in our system. So uh, I've already done that in my server, but if you want to test this um, in your environment as well, what you can do is go to the Users tab in Enterprise Manager and then add these users, uh, the four salespeople that we have in our data set are Annie, Eric, Robert, and Sue. You can add these users by pressing the new user link down at the bottom if you'd like to. And then additionally what I've done is I've given each of these users permission to see the contents of the repository because in order to test this out I want to allow these users to log in and then see uh, what the um, resulting bursting report looks like for each of these users. So to do that, to give these users access to the repository, what you can do is go to the Report tab in Enterprise Manager, click on the Repository folder, and then under the Security tab for the Repository folder, provide permission for these different users to access the repository. And this will essentially give these users um, access to the entire contents of the repository folder. And that's fine uh, for our testing purposes here. Obviously, in your uh, production environment, you need to be more circumspect about um, what permissions you grant to different users. But here we just want to uh, simply test the result of the bursting operation that we've done on this report. So with those things in place, let's go to the user portal. So we'll click the uh, user portal link. And what I'll do here is now I'll log in as these different users. So let's log in as Eric, firstly. The uh, default password is success123, S-U-C-C-E-S-S-123, for all of the, the four users. Um, so we'll log in as Eric. And so this, uh, this is what Eric sees when he logs in. Uh, because we haven't given uh, very broad permissions for anything other than the repository, uh, the uh, the portal is a bit bare at the moment, but we can see at least the burst report there. You'll notice that it has a different icon than the other reports because the burst report is a pre-generated report. This means that when Eric clicks on this report, the data is not going to come directly from the database as it would for these other live reports, but rather what Eric will see is the pre-generated version of this report the, the last time that the pre-generation cycle was run. So we'll click on this report, the burst report, and that will load up the report in the portal. And it should load the version of the report that is appropriate for Eric. In other words, when the pre-generation cycle ran, different versions of this report were generated, one for each of the four 
salespeople. And the version of the report that Eric is looking at now is a version of the report which contains only his own data. And you can see that in the last name column here, the salesperson last name field, we're seeing only Hegenbart, that is Eric's last name. And we can page through this entire report, which is 57 pages long, but I'll just skip uh, to some random locations in the report uh, just uh, so I can convince myself that the entirety of this table contains only Eric's data. And if I go to the very end, right, all the way through the end of the report, we're seeing only Eric's data in the report. Well, let's try logging in as another user. So I'm going to log out of the portal and this time log in as Sue. Um, the password is the same, success123. And again, Sue uh, can load up the burst report. Again, it's loading a copy of the report that was generated whenever the cycle most recently ran. And so here's the version that Sue sees. And if you look at the last name column, you'll see that the only records in this table are those corresponding to uh, Sue. Sue's last name is Marston, and all of the records in this table are records for Sue Marston, right, from start to end. And if we want to be thorough here, we could try one of the other salespeople, but uh, I believe you probably get the idea at this point that um, when any of these four salespeople log in, the version of the bursting report that they will see will contain only their own data, as we see here, also for Robert Miller. Okay, so what we've seen so far is how you can set up a report to be bursted uh, to different users, basically giving these different users different views of the same pre-generated report. And the approach that we've taken here is an approach where basically we save the report in the repository and different users log in, they click on that report to view it, and the report that they see is tailored to, uh, to uh, their own needs. They see only their own data. So that is one approach. Another approach that you can take with a bursting report is to schedule the report for email delivery. This is another common approach. So let's take a look at scheduling the burst report for email delivery um, so that these different users will uh, receive via email a version of the report, which again contains only their own data. Let's return to Enterprise Manager. And what we'll do is we'll set up a scheduled task that delivers this uh, pre-generated report to different emails. Click on the Schedule tab in Enterprise Manager. And let's create a new task uh, by clicking the New Task button down at the bottom left. And we can call this task a Bursting Task. Okay. Um, we can leave the default settings for the condition. Uh, the default is daily at 1.30 a.m., the same as the conditions uh, for the default cycle. So if we leave this as is, then this task will run every day at 1.30 a.m. Okay. Then move to the Action tab of the task. Uh, recall that a scheduled task is basically the same as a cycle, except that it also has an action uh, associated with it. So uh, the condition part of the task is basically the same as setting up a cycle, but a task additionally has an action that you can specify. And in this case, what we want to do is specify a burst action, meaning that when this scheduled task runs, we want to take a bursting report and burst it out to different users. So we'll select the burst option. And then from the report menu, we have to select um, the report that we want to burst out to different users. Now you'll notice that in this menu, there is only one choice because in fact, in our environment right now, we have only one report which is designated as a bursting report. The only reports that you'll see listed in this menu are reports that have been designated as bursting reports. And so this is the only selection we can make, the report that we created called burst report. Now the options that we have available here are notification of task status, meaning that when this schedule task runs, and completes, uh, we can choose to notify the different users of the, uh, the task status, or we can uh, choose to deliver a version <coughs> of the report to the different emails, which is probably the most common thing to do. And there's also an option here, force to regenerate report. The option uh, force to regenerate report basically specifies that 
even if there is a pre-generated version of this report already in the system, when the schedule task runs, we want to force the report to regenerate. So although it could rely on the previously generated um, version of the report when, when the pre-generation cycle had run, it could rely on that version. We can also say, uh, specify here that when the schedule task runs, we want to force another generation of the report. Let's take a look at the deliver to emails option here, uh, which is the one that's most commonly used. And what we can do is next to the to field here, we can click the um, dot 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 button to open the select emails dialog box. And then in here, we can select the users uh, to which we want to email um, a version of this report. So we'll select Annie and Eric and Robert and Sue. Those are the four salespeople. You can see that I've defined uh, some emails for these different users. I did that under the users tab. You can do that when you define the user. One of the fields available is to specify a user email. Obviously, these are not real emails. Uh, these are just uh, fictional emails. Um, but what we do is we add the set of users. Again, this is, these, this is a list of users to which we want to distribute the report. And obviously, these are the users also on which, uh, for which the report is going to be segmented. We know that we have the bursting behavior in place, which segments the table in the report based on the different user login names. So these users correspond to the users for which the report will be uh, segmented or bursted. Press OK. And now what we've done is we've set up a bursting schedule task. And when this task runs, it will distribute the uh, report, the burst report, to these different emails. And each of these users will receive a version of the report that contains only their own data. So this is the equivalent scheduled version of what we saw earlier, which is uh, the ability to create a report in the repository and have different users log in and see a version of that report, which is particular to themselves. And so to here, we've scheduled this report so that a unique version of the report will be sent to each of these different users. And again, that's possible because we've already configured the report to be bursted based on the user login name. So to complete this schedule task, we can press the save button at the bottom. And now we have a complete schedule task. And again, when the schedule task runs, these different users will receive a version of the burst report which contains a table with records that are only the sales for that particular salesperson, whoever, uh, whichever salesperson the report is being delivered to. And that brings us to the end of this example on bursting reports. Uh, we hope this was helpful and thanks for listening.